So welcome to example four. This is a collision between two gliders, glider A and glider B, that have a Velcro strip in between them that when they come together, they're going to stick together and leave off with this final velocity. So glider A has a mass of 0.5 kilograms, glider B has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. Their velocities are equal and opposite. And uh, let's go ahead and start to solve this problem. So what we need to do to find this final velocity is we have to make an assumption that there are no external forces acting on the system, like friction. We're looking at just before the collision and just after the collision, so the net force on the entire system is zero, so that we can assume that the momentum of the system is conserved. So start off A by stating the conservation momentum. Momentum initially and momentum finally is the same before and after the collision. Now momentum initially is the momentum of these two bodies. We have A and B. That is your system. So that's mass of A times velocity of A initial. And we have mass of B times velocity of B initial. That's the momentum of these two bodies combined. Now that's going to should be equal to the momentum of the system afterwards, which is now one connected or joined body. So we have mass of A plus mass of B times this final velocity VF. So now we can go ahead and substitute our numbers in so we can find V final. The mass of A, 0.5 kilograms. Velocity A initial is 2 meters per second. Mass of B is 0.3 kilograms. And the velocity of B initial is negative, negative 2.0 meters per second. And that's equal to 0.8 kilograms. We're getting 0.8 by taking 0.5 kilograms plus 0.3 kilograms multiplied by your final velocity. So now let's simplify both sides and we'll get 2 times 0.5 which gives us um, 1 kilogram meter per second and then 0.3 times negative 2 that gives us negative 0.6. Both of these combined will give you 0.4 kilograms times a meter per second and that's equal to 0.8 kilograms times the velocity final. So our final velocity will be 0.4 divided by 0.8 which is 0.5, half a meter per second and that's positive which means it's going to the right as shown in the diagram. So that's part A. We found the final velocity. Now since we know all the information, the velocities and uh, the masses, we can go ahead and calculate the kinetic energy so that we can compare them. So the kinetic energy initially of the system would be one half mass of A times velocity A initial squared plus one half mass of B velocity B initial squared. Okay, and we'll substitute our numbers in one half times 0.5 kilograms times two meters per second squared plus one half times 0.3 kilograms times negative 2 meters per second squared, but that negative is going to be squared. And what we'll get is 1.6 joules. So then let's compare that to our kinetic energy final, which is 1 half mass of A plus mass of B times that final velocity we calculated earlier squared. So that's 1 half times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.8 kilograms times the velocity final we found out here, over here, which is 0.5 meters per second quantity squared. And that gives us 0.1 joules. So you can see there is a considerable amount of kinetic energy that is lost. In fact, we can calculate that Ke lost. Sometimes that's asked. And that's really the change in the kinetic energy divided by the initial kinetic energy, which is really uh, your final kinetic energy, 0.1 joule minus 1.6 joules, divided by your initial kinetic energy, which is 1.6 joules. Now I'm going to take the absolute value of that so I get a positive percentage. And that will give us 93.75% lost. It's quite a bit of kinetic energy lost. Okay, and that's for example four. We're done with that one.